I'm recording now. <laughs> All right, so today we're gonna talk about hotkeys. We got B for brush, E for eraser. Now this is gonna be probably your next best friend, but it's like that friend that you shouldn't hang out with too often because you start like, you start adapting to their habits and they have bad habits. It's, it's control plus Z. This is your undo button. This is my best friend and my best friend is a bad habit. <laughs> So Control Z is going to take you one step back. If you look into the history, this is their history window. Maybe another lesson I'll go through all the windows and how to get to them. But as you can see, it will it will go back and forth from my actions. Now, if you keep pushing Control Z or Z, wherever you're from, Control Z, it goes back and forth. Like kind of like an A B, like comparing the first one and the last action. So sometimes that's good because you want to compare like your changes and see maybe that is that line good. I'm gonna A B it. Now if you want to go back a little bit more, you wanna do control. You wanna do control Alt Z, and that's gonna keep going all the way up to however much history you have allowed yourself. Now, if I want to go without touching it, if I want to go back to the very latest action that I did, which is that line, just once again, control Z and we're back to here. So, and then if I hit control Z again, I'll go to my most furthest undo that I last did. So this is another good way to like AB as well. So this is your, this is going to be your best friend in, in a good way and a bad way. Cause like, honestly, I'm a terrible sketcher because of Control Z. Like, I need to get back into doing some. I need to get back into doing some pencil drawing because I'm very much like, oh, that's a bad line. I'll just, I'll just keep doing it until it's a, it's a perfect circle or a perfect line. And these are just bad habits in my opinion. Like, it, it makes it so I'm not good at drawing lines right off the bat. Like, it takes me several tries and. It's probably not fun to watch. I ain't Kim Jong Gi. I'm sorry, but I'm actually not sorry because I am me. But yeah, that is gonna be one of your friends. But like, you know, the friend that's kind of like a trap. You know, you gotta be careful with this friend. Like, you can't can't get too comfortable with this friend. Control plus Alt plus Z. This is multiple undos. Undoos. Undoo doo. I should probably save this. this June. Demo number two. Okay. Oh, you know, I should have showed you that, that hockey too. Control plus S. This is your save. This is actually your true best friend. This is the best friend that's gonna take a bullet for you, okay? <laughs> this is like, this is the person who will save your life many, many times, as long as you remember to use it. You wanna control save all the time. So control save will just save whatever your natural file is that you already saved the first time. If you hit control shift save, you can save another version of the file, and sometimes you wanna do that because you wanna have iterations. There's some options here. Save as copy. This is so you don't overwrite things by accident. So, control plus shift plus S is new file save. This is the friend that will take a bullet for you. Lifesaver. See, 
So just get into the habit of hitting Control S because honestly you will not regret it. There's no harm in saving multiple times, as many times. The only time it's bad is when your file gets so massively big that you you save and it takes like 30 minutes just to save the file. At that point you should probably like reduce your file sizes. If you can. Okay, let's see. So I got through the basics. These are gonna be your basics. Like honestly you can you can get you can get through a lot with just this. But you know what? Let's let's get into some more let's get into some more advanced stuff because I think I feel like this stuff you can figure out on your own even. But let me get into the advanced stuff. Advanced hotkeys. I don't even know if I would call this advanced hotkeys. These are just hotkeys that maybe you don't know. That aren't so obvious. Okay, advanced hotkeys. So as you I don't know if you guys can see me moving this red circle and it adjusts my brush size. Now a lot of people, they're like, I like to use these buttons to adjust your brush size. Now you can do that and it's good. I just used it. And it will move it'll make your brush size bigger or smaller incrementally. So it's like step by step incremental changes in the size of your brush. Now sometimes that's nice because you want a specific size, but if you're drawing and you want to go from small to big or big to small really quickly, doing this can be such a time waster and like momentum killer. So what I do is I hold alt and it'll bring up the little eyedropper, but you don't want to click anything. You're going to take your pen or mouse. What I do is I set this button, the top button, I'll show you over here too guys, the top button, and I set that to right click. So if you, if you hold alt, tap right click, and you drag, you can adjust your brush size. Trust me, I there was a time where I didn't know this, but I would see other artists doing it, and it took me forever to find out how do artists do that because it looks so pro. And I'm like, I want to be a pro. I want to know how to do this stuff. So this is how you do it, guys. And you can do it with the eraser. You can do it with the brush. You can do it with the smudge tool. You can do it with any like brush tool. So. And if you go up or down, it it adjusts the hardness. I don't use this as much because if I wanted a soft brush, I would just pick a soft brush. So I'll write that down for you. Or... So I'm saying this is great knowledge. Trust me, a lot of people don't know this because I see other artists drawing on their on their computer or whatever, and they're just like, you know, pushing the freaking bracket, the square bracket. And I'm just like, oh, this is taking forever. Or like when I watch a workshop and artists are like doing their demo and they're just like, and I'm like, how long have you been using Photoshop? Because that is not the most efficient way. Not saying that this makes you a better or worse artist. I'm just saying these are like little tricks that can make you more efficient and look cool while doing it. I think it's cool. Hey, when I saw this, I was like, I gotta know how to do this because this is the way. <laughs> this is the way. It's not good if you're trying to get to a specific brush size and that's where you start using your square brackets. Okay, so you use both. There's not one right way. Use both. Hey, welcome to the stream. Welcome. These are advanced hotkeys right here. All right. Let's see what other hotkeys. Oh yes, if you just right click, you can access your brushes and you can choose from your list of brushes here. Instead of just going all the way up here all the time or having your brush thingy open all the time. You could just, you know, I'm drawing, I'm drawing. Oh, I need a new brush. Right click. Just all you gotta do is right click and select your brush and then boom, you got it. 
So just right click. That is going to be your brush menu. Now there's some other cool things you can do um, in Photoshop that can like save your brush settings and you can always just click it and access them the way you set it up but without like compromising the, the original brush. I can get into that another day but I'll just tell you quickly it's it's under tool presets. Super strong if this is how you want to use your tools. I see a lot of artists using this because it's just like Oh, I have like the perfect brush right here. I'm just gonna save into the tool presets. Still have the original brush, but if I click into the tool presets, it will um, go to the settings that you you made the brush into. Because you can customize your brush and stuff, which I'll get into another day. Not today. Today we're doing hockey's. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can learn, and it can really boost your productivity or just make you feel comfortable in this program because. Yeah, Photoshop is a very intimidating program, especially if you're new, but trust me, there's so many things that it can offer that I would say a lot of other painting programs don't, or they do, but I just don't know how to do it because I don't use it enough. Um, I honestly believe though, Photoshop is the strongest, the strongest painting tool. <laughs> uh, don't hurt me, don't be mad, I'm just saying. I know it's just because I'm comfortable and I'm totally biased, but I love Photoshop. It's definitely a clunky program, I'm not gonna lie. It's very heavy. All right, so what else should I tell you about? Um, if you hit F, it can it will kind of like sift through different window options. So sometimes I'm drawing in the normal window and like I want to like draw down here and my tablet doesn't have a lot of space down there and I'm on like this weird angle and my shoulders effed up so it's like oh it hurts. So what I'll do is I'll hit F and it'll bring up this window and I can drag it wherever. Um, left click, no actually I set my brush, my pen to pan and scroll for the, the bottom button. Yeah, I honestly don't use any of my uh, tablet hotkeys here, I, I just, I'm not into it. Uh, I'm sure there's ways that other artists use it that make life really efficient. I'm, I'm not one of them because I'm all about the keyboard, everything I need is on the keyboard. Um, there's this version as well where it just gets rid of everything else. Oh, I was leaving. Uh, if you hit tab, it kind of does the same thing. Makes makes it full screen. So F, change screen mode. These are just like hotkeys that I use often myself. Control R is your ruler. Lots of cool things you can do with your ruler. When you have your ruler activated, you can set up these guidelines. You can snap to them. Yeah, you can go like snap and then like when I'm drawing, it's gonna like snap to those guides. There's also a lot of cool things you can do with guides. Uh, depending on what kind of artist you are, it's really good if you're like an environmental artist or a graphic artist. A lot of cool things you can do with that. So sometimes you don't want to sh have that bar up there, so you hit Control R, it'll hide your ruler. Your ruler. Don't forget to Control Save. Control S, your life-saving best friend, friend who's got your back, guardian angel. All right. So more hotkeys. V. V is very important. This is your move tool. And trust me, you're gonna want to move shit. So V is just your move tool. Does these cool things. 
Let me see, let me show you something cool about Move Tool because I used to use this a lot. Not anymore because I have a different hotkey to do this, but you can go up here and hit Show Transform Controls, and it will automatically have these transform tools for you to adjust your your stuff. Um, now I don't always like it on, so I turn that off personally. Also, if you go up here and you select auto select layer, it'll select everything in the layer that you're clicking. So I wasn't, I didn't click on this layer and you would know all about layers if you, if you were here last week. And if you don't know about layers, well, that video is up on YouTube. So go check it out because if you don't understand layers, you got to understand because it's number one fundamental thing you need to know. So back to this. Yeah. So it selects whatever object on that layer. So you can do the same with groups. I don't have any groups right now, but same thing. It's good if you like want to be able to move things visually, but don't want to go into your layers to find them. It's bad if you have way too many little lines or way too much stuff and you can't really specifically click what you want to click. So just options for you in however you plan to work. These are some tools that you can get into. Um, so speaking of um, transform tools, I use control plus T to transform just because I don't like having that box up all the time anymore. I used to, but not anymore. So control T is transform. This is actually going to be probably one of your good friends as well because it depends on what kind of artist you are. I'm a very heavy line artist, so control T is kind of like one of my good friends. It's in my inner circle, okay? My inner circle. Oh. Angles. I will show you how to use control T. So control T is going to bring up your transform tool. Like so you hit enter to exit out of it. Let me hide these so I can show you the powers of control T. Control T, this is your transform tool. You can size it up. If you hold shift and drag, it will not change the like ratios. It'll keep everything the same ratio. If you hold alt, it will scale from the center or wherever this pivot point is, it will scale from it. Okay. Now, if you hold Alt and Shift, it will scale from the center and keep the same aspect ratio of the object. Pretty cool shit. Now let me take it one step further because this tool is actually the best. If you hold Control and you hit a corner, you pull a corner, you can skew. You can skew the angle. If you do it from the center, you can skew from the center. If you hold Control and Alt and you pull a corner, it'll it'll pull both opposite corners. One of my favorite is Alt and Shift. Actually, no, it's Control Shift. So Control Shift will basically just skew from the top, and the bottom will be locked. If you hold Control Alt Shift, it will kind of like do this little shimmy where you change both sides. Now this is really good when you have like a character standing and they're not standing quite right. So let me just quickly draw a person. You know, this is this is my person. And maybe maybe they're standing like this. And that's not very centered, you know? That looks very That looks like he's leaning a bit too far. So if I hit control T, I can always skew it. Rotate it. Oh, that's another thing. You can rotate if you kind of go out a little bit more, and then you can rotate the object. Maybe I'll just skew the top. Maybe I'll even angle this a bit better so that, like, the character fits, and then boom. Using just the transform tool, I can basically adjust and fix all my mistakes. This is a total hack, guys. This is big hacks right here. So. And then I can just erase that and then straighten up his head if I want. Draw a face. Yeah. We're standing we're standing tall now. 
If you hit L, that is your lasso tool. And I think I showed that last time, but if I didn't, here it is. You can select a certain area by drawing it. Control T that, and you can just adjust this one little area. So you can be like, oh, okay, now, now he's just sticking his hips out. He's like, hey guys. <laughs> yeah, control T, it's very good, very strong. Strong tools here. These the advanced hockeys are kind of like my, my go-to inner circle hockey friends. Uh, let me see, what else can I show you guys before I get into do, making your own hotkeys? I want to show you guys like the original hotkeys before I go into like too much other stuff that is more, even more advanced. Some random cool ones is Control Shift U will grayscale it. So if you want to turn everything black and white, you can hit Control Shift U. Um, if you hit Control U, it brings up your hue saturation window, and you can play around with that. This is also one of my favorites because I like to adjust my colors using sliders. I just think it's easy, and like it's visually easy and it's intuitive. So for me, it's like a very easy way to adjust colors really fast and on the fly. And you can control Z, A, B. Like maybe, maybe I like the orange. Let me go back to the purple. Oh, the purple, I don't know. Back to the orange. Okay, let's stick with the orange. <laughs> so that's how, that's how I would use it. The control Z. Sometimes. Um, let's see, what else? I guess I'll write that down, just in case. If you guys want to see this visually, I'll write that down. Control... I spell, con I spell control t Control. Plus U is your hue set window. Okay. L is your lasso tool. Didn't write that down. I think that's pretty much it for like my close circle of hotkeys before I get into creating your own. So let's bring up this little guy again. Um, so I have a few of my own hotkeys that they don't give you right off the bat with your default Photoshop. Um, and they're actually really important tools to use. I stress this all the time for people to flip their canvases. Like please for like, just please flip your canvases because you're gonna see things that you didn't think you saw before. So I have two ways of flipping my canvases. There's one that's flip image and one that's flip canvas. So yeah, I have my control H as flipping image and control Y is flipping canvas. Now, if you don't understand what that means, let me bring up these words again. So if I flip image, it's only gonna flip whatever's in that, in that, layer. If I flip canvas, it's gonna flip everything. Everything gets flipped, all right? So let me tell you how to get these hotkeys. And you don't have to set it the same as I set them. I just set them as control H and control Y because that's what works for me. And it's like kind of hotkeys that aren't useful for other things. I actually have a few more hotkeys as well that I can show you. Um, so if you go to edit and go to keyboard shortcuts, you get like this menu and you have to like go in and find your your preferred hotkey. So the first one, let's go into edit. If you go into edit and you go under the transform, <clears throat> you'll see flip horizontal. So this is going to be like transforming your image. This I've set to control H. So let me just repeat that one more time. If I can oh, select this. So you want to go into your edit. And under the transform area is flip horizontal. And I changed that to control H. I don't think it has a, any hotkey yet. So you'll want to click into it, 
hit your hotkey, which is Control H, and then hit Accept. You can always save your hotkeys as well, in case you want to bring it to another computer or whatever. You just have to click this, and then you save it. Um, <clears throat> okay, so flipping canvas. I'm pretty sure that's going to be under image. Yeah. And it's under image rotation. You'll see flip canvas horizontal. I set that to control Y. And I hit accept. <clears throat> so when you set these hotkeys, control H is actually hide. And it's actually, that's an actually, that's actually a very important hotkey. Let trying to say things. If you, Go to view, and then it's somewhere here. Extras. They're not going to say it's hide. It's called extras. I set it to control H, and let me show you what it does. When I have my lasso tool here, and I make a selection, or any kind of selection, if you use the marquee tool, this is one I should have showed you. It's M. It gives you that box. It's a marquee tool. But anyways, we're going to go to our lasso tool. And I hit Control K, it's gonna hide my selection, but it's still there. So I like to use this a lot when I use Control U, because I want to see the image without all these like dancing and little ants. Yeah. So I hit Control H, and like I can adjust, and it's easier to see. There's nothing distracting me from seeing the image that is there in front of me. So yeah. Control K, it's actually important. So yeah, M is your marquee box. show you some stuff about the tools. Um, let me just rate my special hotkeys. Oh, if you hold shift and you draw, it goes in any like direction. Or if you make a dot and you hold shift and you make another dot, it's gonna connect them. Little interesting tidbit. I don't know if that's helpful or not. Could be. Um, so, control plus H is my flip image. Horizontal. My control plus, what? Well, I cannot spell. Plus Y is my flip canvas horizontal. And when you first start using hotkeys, it's gonna feel weird. You gotta have to get used to it, and eventually, once you use it enough, you'll know it off by heart. Selection dots. So another one that I really use often, and this is only because it's my personal workflow, this is not something you need, is control Q I set to expand selection because I do this a lot and it just like expands your selection. Yeah, I think I just froze my Photoshop. Oops. There you go. It's fine. So, if you want to use that, you can if you want to be like me. But I highly recommend you be you. But if you want to follow some kind of process, control Q, I set that to expand selection. If you want to draw like me, these are my hotkeys. Yes. Control save. So, I want to get into some cool things with tools real quick before I 
wrap this up. Every single tool in Photoshop kind of has like a sub tool. So if you go to the side here and you right click, you can see there's like, if you right click the brush, there's, there's brush, pencil, color replacement tool, mixer brush tool. I don't know what those last two are, but pencil tool is basically, it's a pixel brush basically. Uh, and you can access all of this via hotkey as well. If you hit shift B, it will go through the different brushes. And you can do this with almost, I think almost e basically every tool that's in here. So if I go to E and I hit shift E, it'll give me different types of erasers and they all do different things. Uh, I just stick with the basic eraser. Uh, L though, which is lasso tool, shift L will give you the polygonal lasso tool. And sometimes this is freaking amazing because it's really easy to get some nice clean lines with this instead of like that wonky lasso, like the loose lasso tool. And then I don't know, I have never used the magnetic one. I don't really use it, but it seems cool if you want to get into using that. My favorite is the regular one and the polygonal lasso tool. Another one you may want to do is M. Usually it's a box. If you hit, if you click Shift M, you get different shapes, which is like a circle. Maybe you want to use circles. Back to the square. It's really just circle and square. I'm more of a square because it selects things nice and clean. It's easy to select things because I can still move it. Let me think. Got your S. S is your smudge tool. Sometimes I'll use it, sometimes I won't. Um, depends what kind of painting I'm doing. If I want those smooth edges, I'll use the smudge tool. So smudge tool, I forgot to mention, it is S. Helps you out. You gotta learn all the shortcuts that I know. Oh, how could I forget? Okay, these are- I'm just- I'm just kind of remembering some of these. G is your- G is your paint bucket. And if you hold, or if you click shift plus G, you're gonna get- Okay, do it like twice because I don't know what this other one is. You're gonna get your greedy shin tool, which is also an amazing tool. This is a boss tool that you'll want to get familiar with, get happy with. You can like set it here to like either take sample both of your existing colors. Let me choose a very different color so you can see. Or you can make it go into transparency so that you can just like maybe fade some stuff in. You can do circles. I don't really use these other ones. Maybe sometimes I'll use this one where it just does it in the middle. Star, I never use this one. I use like the first two and maybe the third one sometimes. So yeah, cool things you can do here. Honestly, I suggest playing around with some of these because I can only show you so much without actually drawing something or using it in action. And the best way to learn is to just get your hands on it and just play around. So yeah, G is your paint bucket tool and your and your gradation tool. Paint bucket, paint bucket's awesome. You can also like make a selection. Like let, let me bring up my little dude again. Actually, you know, what? let's just bring up the circle so I could like select. Well, I'm on the wrong layer. That's another neat thing that I did by accident. Um, you can go to different layers and if you hit W, your magic wand tool, this is your selection magic wand tool, we call it the magic wand. You know, it selects things in certain spaces. So let me go to my proper layer. Now I've selected the inside of the circle. This is where I hit control Q, which is my expand selection that I've set myself. And then I'll do like two another layer and I'll take my paint bucket and I'll fill that in. Boom, we got ourselves a solid circle. And you see I hit control T to expand that. Some cool stuff. If I hit control U, I can change the colors. So already you can see how I use my hotkeys to maximize the amount of steps I take to do certain actions. Instead of going all the way up here looking for the 
actual thing I want to use. I don't even know where is transform. <laughs> Excuse me. Like, you can find everything in here. It's just like such a long process. Yeah. I feel like I'm gonna flip this canvas. When I could just hit control Y. Oops. Um, another hotkey that I did also set for myself is proof setup. This is a little bit more advanced stuff. I've set it to F2. And what it does is it, it, okay, never mind. I didn't set it to F2, I set it to F1, okay? It, what it does is it will grayscale my stuff, but not actually change it into grayscale. It's more like just to check the colors and the values. See, if I hit Control U, sorry, Control Shift U, you can see in the layers here that the actual layer is gray now, which is not what I want. Like, I just want to check the values. So what I'll do is I'll use proof setup, and you can see it's still a pink circle, but what it's showing me is the grayscale values. So that's, uh, that's proof setup under view. Proof colors, which is the F1, is the action of using proof setup. <clears throat> So that's pretty much it for a quick rundown of like hotkeys, how they can help you work more efficiently and comfortably without like breaking up your momentum in your creative work. <laughs> um, what I can do is I can do a little demo and I'll try to say all the hotkeys I'm using. So I hit B and I hit right click, choose our brush. Alt, right click, drag to adjust my brush size. Yeah, see, that's such a long way to use to figure out your grayscale. Like making a copy and then grayscaling that. But when you can just hit F1 or proof setup or proof color, sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick little demo and that will bring us to an hour of this little lesson. I don't know what I'm gonna draw. Should I draw like something cute? I don't know. Cute's like easy. To me, I think drawing cute things is pretty easy. Yeah, when I learned the proof setup or proof colors technique in one of the workshops I was watching, um, it blew my mind, honestly. So I hit B to move things, because sometimes I draw on a weird area of the canvas. I don't know what I'm drawing. Just drawing lines. Right now, since I'm just sketching, I'll use a lot of just B and E, which is my brush and my eraser. Sometimes a control Z will sneak in, like right there. I know what I'm gonna draw. <laughs> I'm gonna erase this all. I didn't get a chance to draw a mermaid for mermaid, so maybe now is the best time. Even though it's June now. So 
now that you're conscious of what hockeys I'm using, I hope you can see it more when I'm working. You can see how using the hockeys allows me to just sketch freely without like going all the way here to hit eraser and then erasing and then going into here to hit the brush. Like I can just stay in this on this canvas and work comfortably. Because the last thing you want as a creative is to, you know, get busy with gadgets and stuff and then your creative flow is just destroyed. I'm so strapped for time. She's in the water, so her hair should be like everywhere. Maybe I want the tail to come out more. So select that. And I'm gonna adjust it however I want. Quick little tidbit, if you hit Control W while you're in Transform tool, it'll, it'll open up the skew tool. Or not the skew, sorry, the warp, the warping transform, which is pretty sweet. It's also a very neat way to adjust your drawings better. Sharing, I'm sharing the secrets here, all the secrets. These are the tricks of the trade. This is how you're gonna get fast. Obviously it takes practice. You're not just gonna become a pro with these little hotkeys. Tools are only as strong as the user. You know, you give like an amateur a lightsaber, doesn't mean they're a Jedi. It takes training. <laughs> That's right, I use the Star Wars reference. As you can see, I'm using my control Z because I can't draw lines. I don't like what her arms are doing. They like really don't say anything. She's got one of those like really pretty fan tails. She's a solemn, a solemn mermaid. Sketch, that's not bad. <laughs> like, I can 
for me, I can tell what's going on, more or less. Actually, sometimes I draw things and I really don't know what's going on. I just, I make it up as I go. Once I get into the cleaning line phase, I'm just like, I think this is what I meant to draw. I just fake it till I make it. And then, like, you see it works. It doesn't work all the time, and then I gotta start over. your drawing looks solid on both sides. If it's working on both sides, it's working. I'm telling you guys, you gotta flip your canvases or I'll be very upset. Just remember, like, my face. And it's like, flip your canvas! Yeah. It's very important. Don't forget about your alpha locks. If you were watching last week, you'd know all about alpha locks. If you haven't, it's on YouTube. You can find the link in my bio. So I haven't really gotten into color yet, but yeah, I'm just I'm just coloring as yeah, as usual. You know what I'll do? I'm gonna paint bucket this because majority of it. Oh, should the tail be blue? No, we gotta go with some aqua kind of colors. We oh, yeah. I don't have time to clean this, but I just wanted to show you some kind of quick demo. demo to show how I use all my hotkeys to the best of my ability to create quick momentum safe <laughs> saving process of using hotkeys if you hold alt and you click that's your color picker I did mention it but I didn't show you the actual work of it Color. I hit Control K to hide the dancing ants. I'm just changing the hair color. So when I get more into color, I'll show you guys my coloring processes. So usually when I'm really focused, I can work pretty fast and. Most of the time I'm not focused and I'm distracted because my mind is all over the place. And I'll probably work a little slower. y'all be interested in like if I had co a course on certain stuff like character design or creature design if, if anyone would be interested in like learning from me of course I'm still working hard on being a teacher still got a lot to learn on how to teach and that's why I want to that's why I'm doing this because I want to learn to be a better teacher because I think when you teach you it's like a challenge to the self on like what you actually know versus like what you think you know and i want to know i want to know if i'm actually legit knowledgeable <laughs> about what i'm doing yeah 
maybe I'll start up a Discord server or something. I already did one course on the Art House server run by Maxine, Art of Maxine V. If you check her out, she's amazing. She's way better than me. And an amazing painter, and she does teach classes as well on the, one of the websites. I don't remember which one, but I did a little short, a condensed course. It was like an eight-week eight course on color and like basically like color theory and stuff. So I think people really enjoyed it. Um, it was hard though because everyone's from different time zones and it, I couldn't really do much uh, one-on-ones as I'd like to and like critiques in person I would have to make videos which is fine. Uh, it was just kind of a, quite a bit of work for me um, but I learned a lot doing that so it's all good. Teaching is work. Yeah, I was trying to teaching like lighting and like understanding values and basically how to color. You can't color well unless you understand values. And that was basically what I was getting into in my my workshop or my my mini classes. Tough though because like I have so many commitments and like I'm scared I won't be committed to the class <laughs> but I'm committing to this so maybe I'll, I'll be good every Wednesday I'm gonna show a little bit or at least until like we come to a point where I don't have much to show you guys it's up to you to just practice at that point on your basic fundamentals of Photoshop Cool little scale textures. Ooh. Ooh me. He had some highlights. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, this is not a painting tutorial. This is just me showing you a demo of how I use all my hockeys. This is a really cool one. If you wanna use clipping masks or like clipping layers, sorry, you hold alt and you click in between the cracks, it will clip your layer to the layer underneath. Cool stuff. For those of you that are more advanced and understand what clipping layers are. Saves so much time than right clicking and, and going to clip clipping create clipping mask. Bruh, my friend taught me that not too long ago. Like, I learned that technique literally a few months ago, and it blew my mind. That's what I'm saying. You never stop learning. Oh, oops. You can always make another layer on top. said I couldn't be a painter I'm painting right now I'm not I said I, would, I couldn't be a painter <laughs>
video on the IG live is dead. It's dead, Jim. enjoyed this little mini lesson I hope these mini lessons are actually like you know rewarding and offer stuff that can help you out in your everyday drawing with Photoshop especially if you're a beginner at Photoshop these are things that no one's gonna tell you I had to figure out a lot of things on my own but you know you shouldn't have to we got the internet for that <laughs> so I'll just tell you what's up I did learn a lot of stuff from other people too, so I feel like it's only proper to give back. You know, my mentors gave to me and I'm gonna give back to to my peoples, which is you guys, y'all. That's like the least I could do. Yeah, I'm just kind of playing around here now. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something. I'm going to upload this to YouTube. If you haven't checked out my YouTube yet, I haven't linked it on my stream on Twitch, but I will link it eventually. It's just Art of Mellow as well on YouTube. So if you want to see this spot again, or like this video, and because you forgot the hotkeys or whatever, you know where to go. Because I think Twitch eventually will delete your stuff, so. Okay. Thank you and peace out, guys. Uh, tune in tonight for the unboxing and assembly of my standing desk. It finally came in. <laughs> <laughs>